Good day, gentle viewers. In today's news, a bunch of delays to talk about with a side of speculation. We got some good news in the form of an anime announcement that I am personally excited for. All of that alongside the first look at the ranking chart for this summer season. So without any further ado, I'm Tristan Glantz and welcome to Glass Reflection. Let's jam. Let's start off with the bad news for those in the know. We got a couple of shows currently airing that are being delayed in some way, shape, or form. Because this is the new normal, unfortunately, and the sooner that we deal with that, the sooner that it won't bother us so much, we can hope. But the problem with delays in the anime season is mainly not knowing about them beforehand and then getting confused and disappointed when you're ready for an episode that doesn't show up. So let's try to alleviate that, shall we? ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead, is getting its second delay of this season due to the unrelated broadcast of the World Athletics going on in Japan. Well, yeah, we end up watching a lot of things on streaming services nowadays. It is still a thing in Japan that they all run on regular TV schedules still, and the rest of us will just have to to deal with it. Episode 6 of ZOM 100 is now set to come out the following week on the 27th of the month instead. So find something else to do this Sunday, I suppose. Alongside that, if you are watching the Madhouse anime Gene of AI, its 8th episode is going to get a delay later this month. Episode 8, instead of airing on the 25th of the month, as intended, will instead get booted until the 1st of September. And I actually appreciate this a little bit because they gave us quite a bit of notice for this delay at least. Though what does confuse me is the reasoning that it's because of a special program. You know, a program so special on television that they can't even name it in the official notice of this delay. I'm sure if I wanted to, I could go digging and find out what is airing on MBS, TBS, and BS, TBS on the 25th of August in AI's regular time slot, but I personally don't care enough to check. Last thing here is not a delay necessarily, but rather speculation about the shortening of a season. Anime series Sinduality Noir, the mixed media project of the newly formed Sinduality franchise, has been officially confirmed to only be getting up to 12 episodes. And this is interesting because, while we have never been given 100% confirmation of the absolute episode length of the series, unofficial reports of the series have kind of listed it to be getting 24 episodes by the end of the year. Now, those reports could have been, I don't know, maybe a little bit over-enthusiastic by either the staff or the fans and their interpretation of the show's success and schedules and things, or it could have originally have planned to have been 24 episodes, but then either due to performance or other, you know, backroom shenanigans, the series is now being cut down to a single core, which, if true, I am disappointed in because I'm actually following this one. It's not a series that I would say is profound in any way, and as I mentioned in my seasonal video last month, it has a lot of nostalgic vibes to the to the early 2000s mecha, and I've been loving that aspect personally. So much that I would say that this series, this part of a mixed media franchise, which historically have had anime that have been not great, a range of like uninspired boredom to absolute shite. In the realm of mixed media anime projects, I feel like this has been the best one of them that I've seen in a long time. So if it is true that it is getting episodes cut off, that is quite disappointing. With luck though, that is just speculation and it was always supposed to only get 12 episodes to begin with. But it's not like this sort of thing hasn't happened before. Heck, Gundam Witch for Mercury only got 24 episodes split between two seasons and it's the first time that a true mainline Gundam did not get like 50 some odd episodes. So that was really strange for some reason. I don't claim to know the minutia of what goes on within production committees at, and how they decide things. But either way, I just end up watching what they put out or not. So that's it for delays and speculation for the time being. Hopefully that is it for this season. But I'm not holding my breath for that one. But before we continue, I wanted to give shout outs to supporters of this channel over on Patreon because yes, this video is not sponsored and the more support that we get over there, the less sponsors that Glass Reflection will need at any given time. So an immense thank you, especially to patrons like Omar Showman, Sailor Arashi, Hector Montemayor, Wago221, City Yamako, Rifen Bonaparte, and Ross Emerson. We can't continue this without your support, so however much you are able to help, I'm eternally grateful. 
Let's talk about upcoming things though now, since, you know, that's a little bit more upbeat. Also, more recently, we got the announcement for an anime adaptation of the series, My Daughter Left the Nest and Returned an S-Rank Adventurer. Now, normally, I don't cover a lot of adaptation announcements because not only are they numerous, but more often than not, they are adaptations of things that we don't have access to in the West. So it's not like they have an existing fan base to pull from, and it's the anime itself usually over here that builds said fan base. But in this case, I've actually been slowly enjoying the manga as it's in prepub over on J Novel. To specify, I am not being sponsored by J Novel, though if you want that J Novel, check out my business email. However, since I am subscribed to their service so that I can get a new chapter of Ascendance of a Bookworm every Monday, I do also try to take advantage of what I have paid for and uh, end up reading other things that are on pre-pub when I have the time, and this includes S-Rank Adventurer here. I mean, we don't even have a full volume of the manga, even though the light novel has been released slowly in English since 2021, but from the little that I've been able to read from the manga adaptation, I mean... It's, it's pretty good. I really do enjoy reading a, a straight fantasy series that does not have an isekai protagonist. And this is exactly that. Like that's really all you need to sell me at this point. That's how easy it is to get me into a fantasy narrative. Our main character was abandoned as a baby and then raised into a young fighter by a former adventurer. She eventually, as the title suggests, leaves the nest and becomes an adventurer herself. She then, as the narrative continues, wants to return home to visit her father and hometown, but keeps getting sidetracked because, well, threats keep coming up and the Adventurer's Guild is obligated to handle them. And since she's the only one that can handle them because nobody is as good as she is, she has to be sent out to handle it, even if those threats are anything but for her personally. Overall, at the start of this series, as most long-titled <laughs> narratives tend to do, it is exactly as it says on the tin as far as its narrative goes. And I have been enjoying it, so to see it getting an anime adaptation later this year is good news as far as I am concerned. Hopefully, the anime will be just as entertaining as the manga has been as of late. And now it is time to get into my favorite part of the video where we will be discussing the anime trending chart. This will be the first time that we are looking at the chart for the summer season. We are a number of weeks in and I actually feel like that is a good time to start. It has nothing to do with the fact that I've been busy and haven't been able to do these videos at all. It's a good place to start, I feel like, because the first couple of weeks, not everybody has seen everything. It's where things are occasionally overly good because that's the hook that's to drag new viewers in and then there's a little bit of a slowdown so it's this this middle period in the season the start of the middle period where we are now that I actually really enjoy seeing rankings from because this is where this is where shows are made let's put it that way now I will say at time of recording um, anime trending's website seems to be not working all that much Perhaps by the time I edit this video, it'll be magically working and editor me can clarify that. But thankfully, Anime Trending does put a uh, infographic of the top 10 of their chart on social media. So we're going to be pulling from that. Unfortunately, what that means is that I can't go beyond the top 10 because I don't know what's there. And the website's broken for me right now. So we're just looking at the top 10. Though it does show the most important spot, uh, that being the number one spot in which My Happy Marriage takes the cake. My Happy Marriage is an amazing series and I have been enjoying it heavily. It is so far my favorite anime of the season, which is hilarious because if you've watched these videos that I do on any semblance of a regular basis, you'll know that my favorite anime of the season is generally speaking something that gets dumped all the way down to like 20 or 30th place. So the fact that I am actually in agreement with the people who vote on this website that My Happy Marriage is the best thing that this season has to offer I'm overjoyed that, that we agree for once. Now going down the rest of the top 10 list, you got Mushoku Tensei in second place. I have no qualms with Mushoku Tensei at all, though I will admit we are uh, hopefully getting out of the period of arc as someone who has read the light novel uh, that I dislike, which is the Rudy is overly depressed and is not having a good time arc. We will slowly move into probably some of the better arcs in the entire series very shortly, but I have no idea how they're planning to adapt or how far they're planning to adapt um, as time goes on because we're not even, we're not even halfway through the light novel at this point. I think we're only in like volume eight or nine out of 24. So there's still a lot of stuff that they could adapt here, or there's a lot of stuff that they could skip. 
We'll have to see. Hordemia coming in for third, a good continuation, because it's just more great Hordemia from a couple of years back. I have no qualms, no complaints. Jujutsu Kaisen getting actually dropped down a place is surprising to me based on the series' popularity, but you know, it's still in the top five. Dark Gathering, oh my God, Dark Gathering's in the top five? Yes, thank you, please. This is the closest thing to like a proper horror series we've gotten in a while, and honestly, it's not even that horror filled. It's just unsettling, but you know, that's good enough for this, this genre in which we have been starved for good content from. The girl I like forgot her glasses. Now I know I kind of, I kind of tossed this one to the wayside along with the masterful cat as well, purely based on the fact that Gohans did it and I cannot stand their animation style. I'm happy that that's not bothering other people. It's still a deal breaker for me, but you know, you do you, you enjoy the series. I am sure the narrative itself is great. No comments for me on Bungo Stray Dogs or Bleach. I am not watching either because I never really got into Bungo Stray Dogs and now we're in season five. So I, I have less of a reason to actually try and dive into that because there's so much backlog. And Bleach is Bleach. I mean, I'm also pretty behind in Bleach. I never even ever got around to catching up on Bleach ever in the same ways that I'm not caught up on any semblance of Naruto or One Piece. So is that all that surprising. What is surprising is that the second season of Sugar Apple Fairy Tale, or rather the part two of season one has made it to this top list. I don't believe uh, while we were going through the first part of season one that it ever made the top 10 on this list. Now granted, according to the chart, this is a newcomer to the top 10 and this is the first time it has made it to the top 10. So hey, maybe it is suddenly getting better even though it was a series I dropped way back in the day. That could be good. Maybe. And then coming in at the very end, the very bottom of the top 10 was Undead Murder Farce, a series that I enjoyed heavily for the first three or so weeks, and now I'm a little less positive toward it. I mean, in general, I don't really have a problem with it. It is still pretty good. I am just not, not the biggest fan of how, I feel like the narrative has slowly transitioned from really cool original ideas into we are now a fan fiction because we've brought in Holmes and Watson and Moriarty and they're all main characters now and Lupin's here and it's uh, mentioning that these characters exist and you're wanting to exist within the same world elsewhere, that's fine. Actually having them be characters and be important to the plot can work, but not when I feel like they're as entrenched as it is here. Because I feel like you, you, when you run, when you're running a mystery narrative and you have Sherlock Holmes as a main character alongside your own, your own freaking detective characters, like then you're, what are you doing? It's like you just want to be like, hey, I'm smarter than Sherlock Holmes. Look, I wrote it that way. I'm sure it can still work out. And you know, with the narratives that the show has being multi, multi episode long, we could definitely see some things come up in the future. I'm just not optimistic because I have to question why are we here? Why are these characters here? You you had a great start, a great intro. The main trio is are great. They're wonderfully written. You don't need all these other legacy characters to come in out of nowhere. What are you doing? And so that's my general existing thoughts on Undead Murder Farce. We'll see how that continues because I'm still watching it as we go. And that is it for our show today. So subscribe if you haven't. Click the like button if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, whenever that happens to be, watch more anime and stay frosty.